good afternoon to you people of Dumfries and Galloway. We've come all the way from England to share this message with you. We haven't really, we've gone on holiday to Lockerbie, but I want to tell you this message today. There's something really important every single person needs to hear. The first thing is this, you matter. You really do, You're, you matter. You're alive today, your heart is beating, you've got lungs, you're alive today and you are important, you matter. And that is so important, just remember this. But above all, you need to know this, the God of heaven loves you. There's no one in this world who has the right to say, no one loves me. No one can say no one in this world loves me because God loves you. And it's all you have to do for the evidence of that is look at the cross. On the cross, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took your punishment in his body. Now have a good look at me right now. Everyone have a good look at me, this man in front of you. Believe it or not, I'm a married man. Do you think I've ever made my wife cry before? What do you think? I have, I've made my wife cry. Now look at these uh, eyes, okay? Imagine everything I've ever seen was put behind me on a big screen. Would I be embarrassed of anything I've ever seen before? What do you think? I would actually. And you see these lips. Do you think these lips have ever said nasty, bad, curse words, swear words? Do you think I've ever said those kind of things? They have. Now I will say this, or maybe I will, but I, I've seen some tough people around here today in Dumfries, so I need to be careful. But you see these fists here, okay? Do you think these fists have ever hit anyone before? I know I'm to heaven. I am, not because I'm a good person. As you can see, I've done wrong things. I've done bad things. But there are two types of people who get into heaven. Perfect people and forgiven people. Now, is there anyone today in Dumfries who is perfect? Well, not are we, but every single one of us can be forgiven because on that cross, Jesus Christ took your sin in his body. You know, they smashed the crown of thorns into his skull. You know, they plucked out his beard. You know, they smashed nails to his hands and his feet. There he was, the darling of heaven. And on that cross, your sin was put on him. All the wrong things you've done was laid on him. And the Son of God bled there and died so that you could be forgiven. So if any man, any woman says, Lord God, have mercy on me, the Son of God can wash away your sins. I don't know if it snows around here ever. Does it snow in Scotland ever? I think it does, doesn't it? You know when it snows, even the dirtiest street looks, looks really clean, doesn't it? Snow has a sort of cleaning effect on streets, has a clean effect on us. And the Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ can wash us white than snow. Even though we've got stains, even though we've got sins, even though we've got guilty things, skeletons in our closet, things we did in the past, the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away your sins. That blood can wash you white than snow and you can have a new beginning. Is there anyone today who wants a new beginning? Is there anyone today who wants to know that their guilt, their sin, the wrong things they've done can be washed away because Jesus died on that cross? He took the punishment so you wouldn't have to take it. He paid your fine. You stand before a judge guilty, condemned. I can't pay this fine. But Jesus says, I'll pay it for you. So the judge can look at you and legally dismiss your case. The judge can look at you and say, I forgive this person. It's, it's okay. He can walk out of that court case, court case free. And I'm asking you today, we consider these things. Now you might be thinking, why would I trust Jesus Christ? What's the, what, what's the big deal about Jesus? Why not put my trust in Muhammad? Why not Buddha? Why not Gandhi? Why not Elvis Presley? Why do you put your trust in Jesus Christ? I'll tell you why. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, but then what happened on the third day? He was put in that tomb, one day went by, stillness. Two days went by, stillness. But on the third day, what happens? Jesus Christ beat the grave. He rose from the dead. And I'll tell you something, anyone in Dumfries today, if you died and three days later came back from the dead, I would listen so carefully to what you have to say. And that's why we listen to Jesus when he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. A priest won't save you. An imam won't save you. A preacher like me, I will not save you. It's only Jesus Christ who can save you because he's the only one who died and then three days later beat the grave. Have you got an answer to your grave? Here's a shocking statistic that I bet you've never thought about before. Are you ready for it? 10 out of 10 people die. Is that right or is it wrong? Am I right? Is it right or wrong? 10 out of 10 people die. 150,000 people die every single day. And my dear friends, you're gonna die one day, I'm gonna die one day. And you better know that when you step into the waters of death, when you're plunged into the icy cold waters of death, you have a hope beyond the grave because the Son of God has washed away your sins. He's forgiven you and he said, I've given you eternal life. Because all you have to do is receive it. 
It's a gift. Don't earn your way into heaven. Being good won't save you. Uh, doing charity works won't save you. Going to church won't save you. It's only saying, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Would you save me? Would you have mercy on me? And he will. He promises he won't turn anyone away. Thank you. I'm going to take my English accent back to England. Thank you so much for listening, uh, people of Dumfries.